So picture this, you walk into a major department store, it could be a Macy's or a Dillard's or a Winner's or a Nordstrom or whatever, and you find all of these designer men's fragrances. What I'm doing in today's list is I took 10 of the most popular men's fragrances on the market, and I'm gonna be ranking them from worst to best. I'm excited to give you my thoughts in just a second, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on these 10 men's fragrances, these are designer fragrances. I'm gonna be ranking them from worst to best. These are some of the most popular men's fragrances of all time. I wanna start the video off first by saying that if you're a fan of this type of content here on YouTube, top 10 videos, reviews, unboxing, so on and so forth, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, and please, please, please give this video a thumbs up. It would mean so much to me and it would assist the YouTube algorithm greatly. The first one that I wanna talk about is Gucci Guilty. How do we know this is popular? Hey, this came out some time ago, composed by Jacques Couclier, one of the biggest perfumers in the industry. Of course, we've had the Eau de Parfum, the Parfum, we've had the Elixir, which just came out. So there have been a few flankers, the Oud version, the Absolute version, so on and so forth. This fragrance is a bright, citrusy, floral fragrance. It is going to be one of the most complimented fragrances on this entire list. The criticism that it gets is that it's kind of boring, right? It's a bit nondescript. Personally, I enjoy it. I know I get really positive attention when I do wear this, and I have been asked several times what I'm wearing when I have worn this in public. Now, if you want huge compliments, go with Gucci Guilty Black. Of course, the original is also really popular, and there has been an intense version, and a collector's version, and a whatever version, so I'm just talking about the original today, and it is super popular, but I put it towards the bottom of this list because there are some more interesting fragrances on this list. Now, here we have one composed by Alberto Morias, one of the biggest perfumers, of course, much bigger than Jacques Couclier as far as his catalog is concerned. He's done everything from Aqua Dijon to this one to many other Gucci fragrances as well, the Alchemist Garden. He has his own brand called Missancier. Here we have Versace Porom. This one is also kind of plain, but it's a great casual fragrance, perfect for the office as well, great for the hotter weather. It just smells very clean. There is that over overtone of freshness in there. There's a ton of citrus in here. Versace Porom is awesome, but of course, it doesn't do things in a super unique, interesting, and original type of a way. There are a lot of people who actually prefer the flanker Dylan Blue over this one, right? But I do like the original Versace Porom. Now look, here's another really, really popular one, Versace Eros. Now, of course, we've had Eros Flame, we had the Eau de Parfum, we had the Pure Parfum. I own all of them, of course. I'm talking about the original. This is an overdose of tonka bean. There's tonka bean, there's mint, there's vanilla. So it does go in a sweeter direction and it kind of changed the direction of more contemporary men's fragrances. And you've seen since then, Paco Rabanne has put out like Invictus, for example. That also features an overdose of tonka bean. Versace Eros is one of the pioneers to do that. And it always turns out that with these types of fragrances, they will, how should I put this? They will utilize a certain ingredient and then they will sort of play off of that ingredient. So we've seen with Azzaro, right? We have Wanted, we have Invictus. Neither one of those are on this list actually. So I may very well do a part two. If you would like me to do a part two, drop a comment down below and I will happily do that in the future. But this is one of the original fragrances to utilize tonka bean in this manner or to really give it the spotlight as it were. Of course, we also have Angel for Men or Amen by Thierry Mugler. I love this one. This is probably the most unique fragrance on this entire list, and it is. It's the most unique fragrance on this entire list. The thing with Angel for Men, the ethyl maltal, that cotton candy vibe, the patchouli, that tar note that people talk about, it has this caramel-like personality that's very dulcet and also a little milky as well. And that sweetness, I mean, as a gourmand fragrance is released in the mid 90s, this one was well ahead of its time. Also composed by Jacques Couclier, who did this one. The next fragrance on this list, of course, is Cool Water by Davidoff. And of course, with that being said, there's a lot of fragrances that are not on this list. Lotus et Poron by Issey Miyake. Of course, we also don't have Dior's Fahrenheit, which also came out in the late 80s, just like this fragrance did. This one is composed by Pierre Bourdon, who also worked on Green Irish Tweed by Creed, which came out three years prior to the release of this one in 1985. This one, I believe, came out in 88, right around the time of Aspen by Cody or Giorgio Beverly Hills. This fragrance is the original aquatic. 
in many ways. It's an overdose of Kalone. It has a lot of fresh ingredients. It's a huge compliment getter. I love cool water, but it's a little bit further down on the list because some people will say it's outdated. I don't believe that. I think it still smells quite modern, very fresh, very contemporary. The only thing is that the fragrance itself is gonna be highly recognizable. So people are gonna notice that you're wearing cool water. Now here's one that's a bit more modern, but also a bit more controversial by Paco Rabanne. This is called One Million. We have at least two new flankers coming out every single year for One Million. If you just go online to some fragrance forums, you will see a, a whole slew, a plethora of flankers for this one. This one has that bubblegum vibe that people talk about. It's sweet, it's floral, there is citrus in here as well. It's a touch of mint, but it does have that sweetness that kind of pervades in this composition. And personally, I really enjoy One Million. I know a lot of people might consider it to be a bit youthful or even juvenile perhaps, but I actually enjoy it very, very much. Of course, it's hard to put it above something like an Eros or an Angel for Men. So it's all a matter of personal taste. I do think it has a lot more wearability than this one. And believe it or not, I think as far as the composition is concerned, the uniqueness of it, I think it's more unique than Eros, but I think they're both compliment getters on the same level. The next fragrance that I wanna talk about is a huge, huge, huge fragrance. Also jumped on the bandwagon of the Eau de Parfum and then the Parfum. We're talking about Bleu de Chanel. This one I believe is Jacques Poles, right? So this is a, an amazing fragrance. You have the incense, you have the grapefruit, it's fresh. It's the number one office fragrance that you can get your hands on. You can't go wrong with Bleu de Chanel. Of course, we also have other more contemporary interpretations of this DNA, if you will. We have Dior Sauvage, which believe it or not, surprise, surprise, is not in this list. I'll put it in the part two, don't worry about it. But something like this, I mean, given how popular it is, and whenever you talk to a modern gentleman and you ask him what he has in his olfactive wardrobe, chances are he's going to say, oh yeah, I have this, I have that, I have Blue de Chanel, right? It's one that pretty much everybody knows about. And I would reckon to say that it's a lot more youthful smelling than a cool water. Some people, like I said, would argue that cool water is a bit outdated, but personally, I find that it's still quite versatile today. But Blue de Chanel, I guess, is more in the contemporary mass consciousness. I love this one. So from father to son, this one, Olivier Polge. This is Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf. I remember when this came out, my mind was blown. <laughs> I said, this stuff is amazing. The pink pepper, the, the spices, the tobacco, the sweetness, this is a, a fall staple for me. So now that we're finally in the fall season, I'm gonna be wearing a lot of Spice Bomb and I really, really appreciate the uniqueness. So I mentioned Alberto Morias when I spoke about Versace Porom. Let's talk about Aqua Dijo by Giorgio Armani now. Now, I just have the Eau de Parfum for display purposes, but I'm talking about the Eau de Toilette here. The Eau de Toilette came out in the mid 90s. It's an amazing fragrance. It has the jasmine, it has the lime, it has the citrus, it has the floral tendencies. It's clean, it's a huge, huge, huge compliment getter. And right next to Gucci Guilty, it's the biggest compliment getter on this list. The Eau de Parfum, of course, is gonna give you an extra few hours of longevity. So if that's what you prioritize and definitely go with the Eau de Parfum, but there's no denying the popularity of the original Aqua Dijo by Giorgio Armani, Italian brand, amazing fragrance, huge compliment getter, incredibly versatile, dress it up, dress it down. The only thing is that people like to wear it in the hotter weather. So now as we're entering the autumn, you might not find the opportunity to wear it as often, but there's no denying the popularity of Aqua Di Gio and you see tons of flankers for it. Now, what did I put in the number one spot? Look, I love this fragrance. I really, really do. Every time I see the bottle sitting on my shelf, I'm like, should I wear it today? And eight times out of 10, I say yes. <laughs> and I end up putting it on, right? That's when I'm not testing for an upcoming review or something like that. This fragrance also came out in the mid 90s. And of course, this is one of the most popular popular designer fragrances of all time. It's still super, super, super popular. There's always a flanker. There's always a limited edition. There's always a collector's version. There's always something coming out on the market for this one. And I know people who still wear it today. I still smell it on people today. Composed by Francis Crookjohn. This one by Jean-Paul Gaultier is called Le Mal. Now, Le Mal is 
one of the most popular fragrances of all time. It's probably the most popular designer fragrance of all time. It came out in the mid 90s and you see decades later, it's still super, super huge. This fragrance is mint, it's lavender, it's vanilla. If you have not tried Le Mans, or if you don't have a bottle of Le Mans in your collection, at the very least for reference purposes, you need to get yourself a bottle of Le Mans. I'm gonna leave all of the links down below to where you can find these. And I'm also gonna try to source links for the best prices online. I know sometimes people like to use Amazon or they like to use Fragrance Net or Fragrance X or Max Aroma or whatever. I'm gonna look for the best prices. I'm gonna drop them down below. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today top 10 most popular men's designer fragrances ranked from worst to best but i'm gonna be honest with you even some of the worst on this list are some of my favorites of all time right so if i really wanted to include the worst i would have included some that don't even deserve to be on this list because they're not as popular as the ones that i spoke about here today but there is going to be a part two so i am really tempted to do a part two with Lotus Et Homme and Dior Fahrenheit and Dior Sauvage and maybe even Dior Homme because there's so many designer fragrances. Hey, what is your favorite most popular men's designer fragrance? Drop your comment down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, if you would like me to do another episode of it, leave a comment down below. I'm always interested in hearing your thoughts. I love the interaction. If you took something of value from today's episode, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. And once again, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys and we'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Bye.